Hey guys, so I wanted to talk about something today that I've really thought about bringing up many times and I've actually started making videos about this over and over again and then I always stop halfway through um, because I'm kind of like not scared but I didn't want to get too personal on this channel <clears throat> but I feel like that the thing that I'm going to talk about is something that a lot of people struggle with especially a lot of people in that college age um, I'm not a college age person anymore I'm 32 um, but the height of my issue happened when I was about 19 to about 23, 24. So I think that it's something that is relevant for college age people and people in general, not just college age people. But um, the more, the longer I've been in school, the more people I've met that have the same problem. And I think that it's something that I can discuss with you guys and talk about things I've done to help myself and maybe it could help somebody out there who's struggling with the same thing. Um, so what I want to talk about today is anxiety. I was generalized, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder when I was in my early 20s and it is something that I carry around with me every day. It's something that affects my daily life. It's something that has affected me for years and I feel like it's something that a lot of people go through but either don't know what it is or know what it is and are kind of afraid to talk about it because it can be a little embarrassing sometimes. Um, so I wanted to talk about my story and hopefully someone watching this can identify with what I went through and am still going through and can, you know, learn from things that I've done and coping skills that I've developed that have helped me. So let me start by telling you how it all started because I think that's going to be a key in understanding you know like where I'm coming from so when I was 19 I specifically remember well let me just say as a as a caveat I have always been neurotic and I've always been a worry wart my entire life I've always worried about everything like anything you could possibly worried about worry about I've worried about it and I've been like that since I was a kid and I've been very neurotic since I was a kid. So this is just kind of my personality type. Um, and But it got really beyond just a personality flaw and really became an actual hindrance to my daily life when I was 19. <clears throat> That's when it really started. So at 19, I remember specifically the first time that it really affected me, I, I started having horrible panic attacks. And I got them, the first one I got, I was in the grocery store and I'm in the aisle and I was just, you know, shopping for some random things. And all of a sudden, just literally out of nowhere, I have no idea what happened. I felt like every, the whole place was like closing in on me. I started breathing really heavy. My heart started racing. I was like paranoid almost. I was looking around like, what's going on? What's going on? Something's going to happen. Like I felt like something bad was about to happen and I didn't know what it was or where it was coming from. So I just felt like I had to run out of there. So I just left the cart in the aisle and I ran into my car and I sat in my car for like 20 minutes hyperventilating and like just being in shock, not knowing what was going on with me and super confused. And my whole body had hives all over it from my neck to my feet pretty much. There were hives everywhere. So I, after that incident, nothing really happened for about a month and then I had another panic attack. And then it went from having a panic attack like once a month to about once a week to like every other day. I mean it was, it got to the point where it was horrible. And it was affecting my work, it was affecting my relationship. I was living with my ex-boyfriend at the time and it was affecting our relationship, it was affecting my friendships. I I just didn't feel like I was I there's no really way to explain it in words like unless you've had severe anxiety or had a really bad panic attack there's nothing rational about it there's no way to really explain it other than you don't feel in control of your own body and your own self you don't feel like you're in control of your life or your body 
or anything that's going on within this like 20 or 30 minutes. Like you don't, you have no control. So it's terrifying. Like it is absolutely terrifying. And on top of it being terrifying, it's embarrassing because you have the, this thing that you're going through and you're scared to tell anybody because you don't want to look like a crazy nutcase because, you know, unfortunately mental illness in this country and anything related to anything mentally is going to have a stigma. So you don't want to look nuts. So you don't want to tell anybody you, you are afraid you're almost fearing the panic attack before it happens. So you're afraid to go places or do things because you're afraid that it's just going to all of a sudden happen in public and you're going to be embarrassed in front of people. So it was really bad. Um, I had these panic attacks for about close to a year, but at the worst, like at the worst time, um, it was about a month and a half of literally sheer dread every day. Like the anxiety at level 10, like out of from zero to 10, it was level 10 every single day for a month and a half. And it got to the point where I really thought something was wrong with me. And I, I remember specifically one night I was, it was like five in the morning and I couldn't sleep. And I laid on my bathroom floor, on the tile floor, and I called my mom. My mom was living in Maryland at the time. I was living in Florida. And I called my mom and I said, I really think you need to fly to Florida because I'm insane. And I'm not kidding. I'm absolutely nuts. And I think I need to go to a psych hospital because something is seriously wrong with me. And she talked me down for about 20 minutes and I can't, you know, I came back to earth and I was like, okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. You know? So about a week after that incident, I got sick with the flu and I was like down for the count. I was on the couch. I couldn't move. I was super dehydrated. I had the shakes, the fever, the stomach virus, the everything that goes along with the flu, the horrible cold. It was really bad for seven days. And I think it was like day four or five of having the flu and having severe anxiety. Um, I was just at the end of my rope, really. And I turned on the TV and Joyce Myers was on the TV and she's a, a female pastor. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm a very religious or very, I'm a more spiritual than religious, I guess you'd say. I grew up in the church, um, so I'm very familiar with the Bible. I have nothing against Christianity uh, other than like a few things here and there that I don't necessarily agree with, but we're not going to get into that. Just just know that I'm not a super duper, you know, Christian person. Um, and at the time, I really wasn't either. But I'm, I'm saying all this to say that sometimes, it doesn't matter where the source is from, sometimes... It doesn't matter if it's your religion or your belief system, but it's good to listen to other people's perspectives, even perspectives of people that, that don't agree with you or don't have the same opinions as you, because you can learn a lot from everybody. And she is an awesome pastor, and she has some really great messages, and I really love her. I think she's awesome. And no, I'm not, I don't agree with everything she says, but I like a lot of her stuff. So she was on TV. And she was talking about this book that she wrote called Battlefield of the Mind. And as, as I'm listening to it, I remember, oh my gosh, my mom bought me this book like two and a half years ago and it's been sitting on my bookshelf and I never read it. And so I was like, I should read it. She's talking about it. This, these people really benefited from it. I'm here miserable at the end of my rope thinking I'm going insane. And I have this book right here. I could just read it. So I read the whole thing cover to cover in a day and a half. And it was like a light bulb went off in my brain. And I realized, and, and there's simple concepts in this book that are just like common sense almost, but when you are at the end of your rope and when you are just literally living on the edge, sometimes those simple concepts don't really come through to you until you read it in a certain way or, or someone delivers the message in, in the right way for you. So I read the whole book and after that moment, I decided it was time for me to take control of my thoughts. Like I cannot allow this to control me any longer. And 
I decided to seek counseling. So I went to a counselor and honestly, I didn't really like her very much. Um, I wasn't a huge fan, but I saw her for a little while and I decided to stop seeing her because I wasn't, I just really didn't click with her and her style of counseling. So I stopped seeing her and I tried to handle this beast on my own. And I was semi-successful <laughs> and I would have bouts of anxiety here and there and panic attacks still here and there, but I was better than I was before. So um, I kept rereading the Anxious and Worried Mind chapter in the book Battlefield of the Mind um, and that kind of helped me realize some of the things and, and things I was doing to myself um, and allowing this anxiety to take over my life. Um, and it really helped me cope with some of the things I needed to learn and like and, and really develop some coping mechanisms. Um, but then I decided to go to another psychologist and I got referred to a psychiatrist and I was prescribed Xanax to take for my anxiety. And um, this was all over the course of a, about a year or so. So long story short, I was taking Xanax uh, when I would have severe anxiety and I would take it here and there. And then I moved to New York City and um, I was doing okay with my anxiety. Like I was managing it all right. <laughs> and I, a friend of mine and I, we were both going through a really dark time. Um, I, I had just gone through a bad breakup and I was just going through a really bad time and so was she. And the problem when you go through a horrible time at the same time as your best friend is that you guys tend to just wallow in it together and be miserable together. And so that's what happened with me and her. We were miserable together and misery loves company. And I, I started taking Xanax way more often than I was before. And I just decided, you know what, this is, this needs to stop. Like, so I, I decided to stop taking them and to really investigate and learn on my own how to handle my own anxiety issues. Because at this point I was probably 24, uh, I would say t like just turned 24. So I've been dealing with severe anxiety now for about five years. And five years is a really long time and it's exhausting. So at that point, I reread the book Battlefield of the Mind and then I really just started investigating and started looking up, you know, healthy ways to manage anxiety because they are out there. There are healthy ways. You don't have to be, some people do need medication. I'm not, I'm not somebody who doesn't advocate medication for certain people, absolutely. Some people need it because they cannot like chemically, they need that help in their brain and I totally get it. But some people can rise above and and develop coping mechanisms where you don't need the medication anymore. And that's the point where I was at this point. So I, I started meditating and I started doing yoga and yoga and meditation uh, really catapulted me into another another place in my head. Um, it really taught me to stop, breathe deep, and relax. Um, I'm always go, 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 go. I'm very, I'm very go, go, go. I'm very worrisome and constantly a perfectionist and constantly worry about making mistakes. And yoga and meditation really forced me, excuse me, really forced me to slow down, take a deep breath, and, and like get it together. So I really started with yoga. Then from yoga, I developed my skills with meditation and I really started with guided meditations. Um, you can find tons of guided meditations on YouTube even. Um, and some of them are 20, 30 minutes and there's just you know soft music and it's somebody speaking to you, telling you things to, like, like guided imagery, imagery and stuff like that and things to see and hear and a way to just focus on this meditation for 20 or 30 minutes and not focus on life's problems. And honestly, yoga, meditation, journaling, I, I started journaling. These three, oh, and aromatherapy, I started using um, 
uh, lavender oil and like essential oils and aromatherapy really helps me as well like before I take a test I'll put some lavender on my hands and I'll smell it and you just take like three deep breaths in and it really calms you it, it gets you calmer and uh, kind of takes away that that uh, you know like on edge anxious feeling in the moment so these are my coping mechanisms that I now use for my anxiety. And there are times where my anxiety still gets the better of me, especially school. School is a huge trigger for me. Um, all of my perfectionism and all of my constant worrying is really tested when I'm in school. And over this past five years, it's been a huge struggle to not let myself get wrapped up in my own brain and I've done it a bunch of times I've gotten wrapped up in my own head and you people who are around me especially my husband he can always tell when I'm up here when I'm in my own head and I've, I'm kind of like living life like this I don't see anything going on around me I'm really just in my own head in my own thoughts and it makes me not a, a good friend it makes me not a good wife or a good daughter because I'm too focused on everything I'm worrying about that I'm not paying attention to the rest of the world and it's not good so I've learned through some you know real self-awareness and real self-discovery I've learned what my triggers are I've learned what I need to do in the moments that I'm triggered and you know sometimes I just need to stop I close my eyes and I count to ten and I take like three deep breaths and then I, I'm recentered. So those are the things I use. Those are the tools I use. Yoga has just been a lifesaver for me. And like I said, yoga is how it started. I started doing yoga because I was, you know, I've been a ballerina my whole life. I've done dance my whole life. And yoga, after I got injured, uh, which was a whole other dark time in my life when I was 25, after I got injured, I started doing yoga to rehab my leg and because I needed to keep moving. As as a dancer, I needed to keep moving or I was going to lose it. So yoga was really just um, a segue into meditation, relaxation, and self-awareness and self-discovery. So all this was said to say that if you are somebody who is like me, who struggles with anxiety every day, who has had horrible panic attacks or or maybe hasn't or has, you know, any type of mental illness or mental disorder. I don't know how you want to categorize it, but anything that hinders your life and you need help. A, seek help. Don't don't feel embarrassed about this and don't feel like there's a stigma or a problem with looking for help. You have to find help. You can't live your life like miserable and upset and crazy. You have to go and seek help. Two, try to seek ways of becoming more self-aware. Like I said, with journaling or yoga or meditation. Three, don't be afraid to tell your loved ones, to tell the people around you about it because you know, they might be going through something similar and they're too afraid to tell you. Don't be afraid to tell your parents. Don't be afraid to tell your friends. Don't be afraid to tell your significant other. It's okay. Like once you finally talk about it and get it out, A, it doesn't seem so overwhelming. B, you have a support system and C, you can really take the steps to fix it. So I hope this helped anybody listening and I hope it gave you guys more of an idea of who I am and and how, you know, anxiety ha can affect somebody through the years and how someone can get on the other side of serious anxiety. Um, I will talk to you guys soon. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you later. Bye.